Hello. I'm very much humbled by your warm welcome. Self-improvement. Many of you have heard of it. Many of you may even be engaged in it, even if you're not really realizing it. Self-improvement has, at this point, graduated from a, move, from, an, from a mere activity to a movement with countless participants all across the globe. The self-improvement market, which includes self-help books, fitness programs, and many other such offerings, is forecasted to grow to 59.8 billion US dollars by 2028. You may ask yourself, and rightly so, how this may be in any way relevant to any of you. The answer to this is really quite simple. If this market grows as it is supposed to or as it is forecasted to, this growth may only be spearheaded by many more people, just like you, joining this movement, consciously or otherwise. This talk is for these people in order to warn them of the potential pitfalls of starting your own self-improvement journey. And all that through the lens of self-love, self-respect, and the Goldilocks principle. However, in order to adequately inform you of this, I'm forced to first define these terms to you in some aspect. Self-love and self-respect may seem at first to be very similar terms, but allow me to distinguish between them from my personal point of view. Self-love is loving who you are right now, currently, in this moment. While self-respect is the desire to still improve upon yourself and your condition, nonetheless. It must, another way to put it is that while self-love is loving who you are, self-respect contributes becoming who you love. It must be noted at this point that these aren't really the official definitions for these words, but merely concepts that I have personally thought up in order to illustrate to all of you my vision of ideal self-improvement. What is an official term, however, is the Goldilocks principle. It derives from the ancient tale of Goldilocks, in which she tries three bowls of porridge, one being too hot for her, one being too cold, and the third one being just right. It basically des describes an optimum point in between two undesirable extremes. It applies to business, human physiology, just in case anyone here remembers like seventh grade biology and homeostasis. And as you're about to find out, it applies to self-improvement as well. But now, with all these obligatory definitions out of the way, allow me to introduce myself. I am Nicholas, long-year student at Leipzig International School, and self-improvement has changed my life. For the better in some aspects, but for the worse in others. I want to share with you my personal self-improvement journey, as well as some takeaways, all pertaining to self-love and self-respect. Picture for a second a boy, 10 or 11 years of age. Hobbies, video games. So much so, in fact, that everything in this little boy's life that wasn't a video game just simply fell by the wayside. He would spend every waking hour playing video games. And he had many waking hours, as he would rarely ever sleep more than five hours per night. He would come to school every single day sleep deprived and perform accordingly. Furthermore, this boy had little interest in sports, but it didn't seem as fun to him as celebrating virtual successes. This, in combination with a horrible, horrible diet, led to the boy growing heavier and heavier and heavier. 
through his lack of social interactions, either with family members or peers from his class, the boy grew socially awkward, shy, unconfident, and as a result, quite socially desolate at times. As many of you may have already realized, that boy was me. Though I had an immense amount of self-love at this time, because I lived what I considered to be any 10 or 11 year old's dream life, I also had a minuscule amount of self-respect, very unfortunately, because I thought to myself, why improve upon my current condition when life was already so great? But it wasn't great, and intrinsically, I knew that. Due to what I could only describe as maturity with age, I began to despise the way I was and the way I was living, particularly my weight. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is well and truly where my personal self-improvement journey begins. It begins with small steps, walks in the park, quite literally. However, very soon, walks would turn to runs and runs to sprints. It was an exhilarating feeling. Each run filled me with energy. Each run cleared my head. Each run improved my physical and by extension, my mental health. During this time, I also grew a lot more confident in my ability to contribute something to a conversation. This is because I began an endeavor which I very much pr still practice and still adore to this very day. Storytelling. I would just sit down with a couple of friends and tell them some stories out of my life. And with each story I told, I felt that I was becoming just that little bit better at interacting with my peers. I was improving. I felt it and I loved it, absolutely adored it. And not even a global pandemic could halt me in my progress. Even though, for obvious reasons, the amount of social interactions that I could have with others shrunk down drastically, sports became all the more important to me, and I began to co incorporate resistance training along with my usual cardio routine. During this time, I had truly reached equilibrium. I had equal parts self-love, as I was very prideful in what I had accomplished so far, and self-respect, as I still had a burning, intrinsic desire to keep moving forward and keep improving upon myself. However, soon, and quite unfortunately, that delicate balance would be tilted massively in the direction of self-respect. All of a sudden, I had, multiple, I had multiple responsibilities mounting up. In order to embrace the financial aspect of self-improvement, I began working a job, a job which often forced me to work on the weekends in order to finish a project. This, in combination with the increasingly demanding IB program, driving school, attempts at maintaining a sleep schedule, and social relationships, and attempts to nurture passionate interests which I had developed along the way, left me in a constant state of mental anguish, otherwise known as burnout. It must be mentioned at this point that everyone's boundaries for this lie elsewhere. And, for some, what left me in shambles may just be normal, and that is completely fine. I only advocate that everyone within this room and beyond it may find their own boundary and grows to respect it. Nonetheless, my boundary was well and truly met. Though I had maintained a massive amount of self-respect throughout, self-love 
was now completely absent from my psyche. I was no longer prideful in what I had accomplished so far. I only saw progress, even if that progress came at the expense of my own physical and mental health. In this respect, I wasn't unlike many other participants in self-improvement. This is because when 2,400 professionals across 41 countries working in enterprises of all sizes were questioned on their personal self-improvement goals, only a third responded wanting to improve stress management and work-life balance. This, to me, is a very pressing statistic, as it shows that many others like me had adopted an incredibly toxic form of self-improvement, in which an excess of self-respect left no room for any semblance of self-love. Here's how this becomes important to anyone trying to improve themselves in the future. You don't want an excess of self-love in the absence of self-respect. It breeds hedonism, overindulgence, and a lack of drive, quite frankly. However, you don't want an excess of self-respect in the absence of self-love either. It breeds burnouts, mental hardships, and self-destructive overworking. However, and I believe much to the delight of anyone trying to improve themselves, there is a third option in all this. I hope you all remember the Goldilocks principle. Because in this situation, there well and truly is an optimum point in between two extremes. Because it is only when we find our own personalized balance between self-love and self-respect that we are able to procure within ourselves a healthy, holistic, but also effective self-improvement. Thanks for listening.